Hello, everybody. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, welcome to Henry's Kitchen. Um, where today uh, I got a very special recipe for you. It's uh, potatoes au gratin, and it's very difficult. Um, I want to apologize again about the uh, fact that on Twitch, it always says grilled asparagus, and I don't know if there's a way to change that. Um, all of us here at Henry's Kitchen, which is basically just myself, um, do try to troubleshoot things as they come up, but uh, sometimes the world moves very fast when it comes to technology and stuff, and um, I can only do things at a certain pace, but I know there's a solution. I might try to call the people at Twitch uh, customer service to see if they could get me to put potatoes au gratin or whatever the new recipe is because grilled asparagus I, I'm afraid that people are going to be like well I already saw the grilled asparagus and uh, and not tune in so um, I'm working on that I'm also working on uh, some of the other things emotes uh, we want to uh, definitely get into emotes and other things but um, like Beethoven once said it just it just ain't easy and uh, that's kind of what I'm up against right now but I will say that cooking is my love and uh, I do appreciate everybody that's tuning in here you can hear me okay yeah yeah I I, uh, I do see that I should get a mod and uh, I'm working on that as well I looked up mod uh, in Google and uh, there were so many entries there was a TV show called the mod squad in the late 70s um, so I do uh, but I eventually did realize it's short for moderator and it's somebody to moderate the chat and uh, and I do uh, I do see the importance of that so um, I appreciate you being patient with me but right now we're gonna learn how to cook and um, I'm going to cook uh, something that's a little bit more challenging than grilled asparagus or uh, peanut butter cookies, which I made last time, which by the way, I still have, and I've been eating about two of them every day, and it's been going well. Um, let's see here. Uh, so potatoes au gratin. I'm sure the first question that comes to mind for you is, what the hell is that? And um, I'm just going to tell you that potatoes au gratin um, with fall on the horizon we begin to trade in our summer vegetables for warm comforting potato dishes and today we will be making one of our favorite dishes au gratin potatoes. Potatoes au gratin also known as gratin d'affoinois is a decadent French dish of sliced potatoes baked with cream and grated cheese and dates back to 1788 in the southwestern region of Dauphine, France. Uh, probably the first thing you're wondering is, well, wait a second, isn't potatoes of rotten the same thing as just um, scalloped potatoes? To that I say, au contraire, mon frère. Um, these two popular side dishes share many similarities, but you may be surprised to learn that they're actually entirely different in origin with just a couple of distinguishing features. The key factor to keep in mind when deciding between scalloped potatoes and au gratin potatoes is whether to include cheese in your equation. Um, let's talk a little bit about the word equation. We're not talking about doing math. Um, we're talking about in factor it into the um, equation. Um, I unfortunately will be doing a little bit of math for this one because the recipe that I'm using actually makes eight servings and that's just way too much for one person so I'm gonna go ahead and make four servings have maybe two servings and then uh, store them so with your help I'm gonna be um, uh, doing a lot of division here. I've got Alexa, what's half of three ounces? 1.5 ounces. 
1.5 ounces. So I'm going to be using Alexa to try to um, combat uh, some of the math that's going on here. But anyway, I don't want to ramble too much. Let's go ahead and uh, get started. Okay, so as you can see here, I've got an ordinary uh, cutting board here, which is going to be um, containing our ingredients. The ingredients that we're going to be using are three ounces of butter, which I've got about, that's about exactly how much I have left. I've got one garlic clove, and I've got uh, four tablespoons of cornstarch, which I'm going to get. Uh, some salt, some ground pepper, uh, two cups of low-fat milk, so of course we'll be using one, uh, some shredded white cheddar, two cups of thinly sliced Yukon gold potatoes. So let's go ahead and just move everything outside of the area here and let's start working on our potatoes. I'm going to start by uh, slicing our potatoes into gratins, which is very like coin shaped, maybe just a little bit more than bite sized. Remember, they're going to expand a little bit when you heat them, so you don't want to make them too big. You know, I think a lot of people, in order to have a good time, they need to have uh, vices like uh, cigarettes or alcohol or marijuana. Okay, so this one's just about done. And if you're uh, watching and wondering what kind of knife I'm using, this is called a paring knife. It's not too sharp, but it's got just enough edge on it so that it's going to be able to make us able to do our potatoes. So uh, the recipe calls for five cups of potatoes. Uh, I've got one cup here. So I'm not going to do five. Alexa, what's half of five cups? Two and a half cups. Two and a half cups. Okay, so I've got, I'm already halfway there. Um, by the way, I want to share something with you guys, and I'm, I'm not really uh, one to get into conspiracy theories and stuff, but I have uh, here a half a cup. You can see here it says a half a cup. I'm going to fill that half a cup up with water, and I'm going to put it into my full cup. Okay, so if this is a half a cup, I'm going to fill up another one, and what you would expect is that it's going to equal, it's going to fill it up to the top. But look at that. It didn't fill it up to the top, and I used two one-half cups. You know, and it's, I think it's just, uh, a lesson in knowing that a lot of times with cooking the instruments that you're going to be using aren't reliable and you have to use your own uh, gut instinct so I'm going to just uh, put this water on some plants so as not to waste it um, okay so we want one more cup of potatoes we're going to go ahead and get started here and if you're doing this at home and you want to make eight, all you're going to have to do is just double whatever I'm doing here. And let's face it, if you have a little more cheese or a little more potato, both of those are good things. Okay, so that's probably about a cup. Or I should put a cup in... Uh, quotation marks. Uh, let's see here. Um, okay. 
Okay, yeah, I, I'm going to take one of these smaller ones, and I'm just about there. This is our half cup. Okay, so now we've got... Um, How much were we doing? Yeah, two and a half cups of sliced potatoes. I'm gonna put these all in this cup. The next, okay, we're gonna put our potatoes aside because we won't be needing these for a little bit. And the next thing that we're gonna be doing is we're gonna start working on our, um, our uh, gratin, or I guess, I'm not sure what gratin means actually, but I think it might be the cheese mixture. So uh, I'm going to need just a second of preparing uh, for that. So I'm going to uh, very temporarily uh, show you a little bit of um, one of my more exclusive videos, uh, which is lactose intolerant ambrosia salad. So just chill out and, uh, and watch this video for a second while I get everything together. And I appreciate uh, everybody's patience. This is a very difficult dish. And I'll also be looking at some of the comments as I'm doing this too, so. Uh... Hello everybody, and welcome to Henry's Kitchen, where today, I'm going to be showing you how to make Henry's back-to-school lactose intolerant ambrosia salad. In 2017, lactose intolerant ambrosia salad was the most popular internet search term by people in Vermont. Oh, and I may have mentioned that I'm fostering some kittens right now so that I could get some more YouTube views. And they had to have surgery recently to keep them from reproducing. And most of them have to wear cones on their heads, except for this one wasn't having it. He just was like, get that thing off me. He was like, hey man, don't tread on me. Wake up, sheeple. So I put him in a tube sock. He has a little goatee, so I call him Guy Fier. Okay, so the ingredients that we're gonna be using today are oranges, shredded coconut, chunked pineapple chunks, vegan-free marshmallows, seedless almonds, a heart full of coconut milk, spackled pecans, clean green yogurt, and some cherries. I couldn't find regular cherries, so I'm using cherry tomatoes, which are a variation. We're gonna start by making our cream. Just gonna blend up our almonds. Our shredded coconut, our coconut milk, and our Greek yogurt. Close it up really tight, and you can pretty much put it on any setting. It's still going to blend it up. I mean, I guess a good analogy would be like if you're learning how to golf and you have a variety of clubs there, pretty much coming out of the tar pits. Okay, so now we're going to start preparing our wet ingredients, starting with our orange. You just want to cut it up into eight even slices. So there's a big fight happening online about whether ambrosia is actually a salad or a dessert. And there's like these old school grandmothers out there who say it's a dessert because it's sweet. But I asked them, I was like, is sweet potato a dessert? Or what about cranberry sauce? Plus, it's got oranges in there, and that's not dessert. Get out of here with this shit. We're going to dice our marshmallows. And these we want to dice into quarters. And lastly, we want to cut our pineapple chunks into tidbits. Okay, now it's time to start putting together our salad. We're going to start by pouring down our base with our coconut cream whatever mixture add in our marshmallows our cherry tomatoes our pineapple tidbits and the rest of our shredded coconut our oranges now let's just stir it all up 
So the name ambrosia comes from an ancient Greek word meaning food consumed by the gods to achieve immortality. But ironically, the ancient Greeks were lactose intolerant. Also, there's a difference between lactose intolerant, which means your body doesn't have the enzyme to digest milk, and milk allergy, which is an overactive immune response to the milk protein. But whichever you are, every road leads to diarrhea, which is very unfortunate. Okay. So the final step is we're going to put our ambrosia salad in the refrigerator for about two hours to chill before serving. You don't want to be serving your guests warm salad, asshole. Hello, everybody. I'm back. Um, so uh, the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're... we're We've got our potatoes sliced up here, and the next thing that we're going to be doing is we're going to be mixing up our cheese sauce. So hopefully this, uh, okay, I'm going to try to adjust this camera so that you can see a little better what's happening. Okay, so we're going to mix up all the ingredients and then we're going to put them on the boiler um, for a little bit. So first thing we want is three ounces of butter. This is about uh, a half a stick which is what I have left. Alexa, how much, um, or wait, let's see, how do I phrase it? Alexa, how many ounces is one stick of butter? One stick of butter is 1,200 Four ounces. I want half of three ounces, so that would be, half a stick would be two ounces, so a little bit more, whatever. Um, that's the butter, and if you have a little less butter, that's not gonna kill you. Um, one garlic clove mince. Now a lot of people uh, don't know the difference, but this is a this is called a bulb of garlic, not a clove. I made that mistake where I thought that the clove was the whole thing, and I made one damn garlicky situation. Um, so I'm just going to take one bulb, which would just be this thing. And we're going to peel it a little bit. And uh, peeling garlic is a very difficult undertaking, and it takes years for a lot of chefs to eventually be able to master. But it's just one of those things you have to do. It's like, you know, going to school or eating your vegetables. It's just like one of those pain in the ass things that is part of life. Okay. I'm going to broaden this a little bit here so that you can see more what's happening. Uh, I have here a garlic presser and this is a particularly good one. I got it at the Bed Bath & Beyond and uh, don't let the sleek design of this thing fool you. This is a bad ass piece of equipment and um, I had to save up for quite a bit to get it. But this is going to work harder for you in your kitchen than just about anything else that you've got. So let's go ahead and put our garlic in this thing. And then what you do is you close it. And then you squeeze it out the other end. Damn. Um, usually you want to take some kind of a tool to uh, scrape it off. Son of a bitch! Sorry, I don't. I didn't mean to use uh, foul language there, but this thing is really difficult. Okay. Whatever, that should be enough garlic for us there. As a matter of fact, it just occurred to me that this is, the recipe calls for one garlic clove, and I had one garlic clove, but we actually want to put that in half. Alexa, what's half of one garlic clove? There's something I found on the web. Half of a clove of garlic is about 0 0.12 ounces of garlic powder. 0 0.125 teaspoons. So I, you know, 
again, we're the, you can't trust the teaspoons anyway, so we're just kind of guesstimating. Okay, so we have here butter. Alexa's still talking. Uh, we have here butter and garlic, and uh, it says four tablespoons of cornstarch. We're going to put in two tablespoons because that's what half of that is. I've got my handy tablespoon here. This is called uh, fecula de maize because it's more of a Spanish version of uh, cornstarch, but I believe fecula de maize translates directly to the starch of corn. Uh, one tablespoon there, and one more tablespoon. Uh, we're gonna also add, uh, it says one teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna be using one half of a teaspoon of salt. Wink, wink, because we know that if, if we put two quarter teaspoons in there, they would come out to be less than whatever they're advertising it as. Okay, but anyway, that's a half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon fresh ground pepper. Uh, this part's gonna be a little tricky. Um, I've got a pepper grinder. It's probably going to be very difficult to grind it into this thing. So I think, honestly, I'm just going to uh, guesstimate and figure that this is probably about a half a teaspoon of pepper. Uh, next up, we have two, cup, two cups of low-fat milk. I don't have milk. Okay, um, let's see here. It says two cups of low-fat milk. I'm just gonna do the one cup here. And uh, this is, I don't have uh, regular milk. I have oat milk, so uh, that's healthier for you, but I'm hoping it uh, tastes just as good. Next up, we have uh, two cups of shredded cheddar cheese. So uh, that means, of course, that we would be doing the one. I have some cheese left over from when I made my, uh, well, they wouldn't be peanut butter cookies, but one of the more recent dishes that I did. So I'm just going to grate this in. I'm going to assume this is roughly one cup. And again, we can't trust those damn things anyway, so a lot of what you're doing in the kitchen is improvisation and uh, general um, learning how to do things on your own as opposed to listening to the authorities. Okay. If you're following along, uh, I'm always interested to, to hear how it's going. Um, maybe if... I don't know if there's a way you can send pictures in the chat, but it'd be nice to see. If you're doing something wrong, I might be able to help you. But uh, at this point, your gratin mixture should be looking a little bit like mine, which is basically, you know, it ain't too pretty yet, but it's it does smell very garlicky, which is nice. And it will smell even more so when we uh, start to cook. So... Um, Next up, we've got, well, I think that's pretty much it. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna whisk it up. Okay, so um, we had a question about cheese and I assume it's somebody who's lactose intolerant. And I wanna say that I'm no stranger to lactose intolerance. Um, as I said, I think in my last video, I haven't had what what they would refer to as a healthy BM maybe since uh, Bill Clinton was president, which is uh, 
it's not a correlation, but just to, to give a timestamp on it, it was sometime in the 90s. Um, and I think that's just because I deal with uh, consuming a lot of milk products, even though it probably is something that I should avoid. That being said, if you want to try to make this dish without lactose intolerance, or, or without lactose, um, yeah, there, there's plenty of cheeses on the market that are made from non-dairy sources like... Um, Gosh, I'm not sure what you would make cheese out of that's not dairy, otherwise it wouldn't be called cheese, but um, maybe peanut cheese or, uh, oh yeah, well, I mean, uh, oat milk is what I used here, so maybe they have oat cheese as well. But uh, if, if you do have... Um, here just had a question about what my favorite breakfast is well I would say that's the breakfast of champions I mean there's the traditional English breakfast which is fantastic which includes baked beans and um, fish but uh, I like the breakfast of champions which is basically scrambled eggs some kind of meat protein hash browns fruit coffee and a croissant. I don't know why they call it uh, the breakfast of champions. Um, because it really doesn't do a lot for you in terms of your athletic abilities. Um, some, uh, somebody asked, uh, what's with all the uh, compact discs? I'm not sure what that means, actually. But, um, okay. Um, okay, so what I have here is our au gratin. I'm going to transfer this into a traditional bowl situation. And we're going to put this on the stove for about two or three minutes until it starts to boil. And then we're eventually going to, I don't know if you can see what's coming, but basically what we're going to do is we're going to combine this with our potatoes. And then we're going to put it in the oven and it's going to be deliciousness. So uh, give me one second here. I, while I'm doing that, I don't want there to be dead space, so uh, maybe try to think of a song that you'd like to hear, and I can perform a song while we're waiting for this to boil. Uh, meanwhile, we can check in also on the, uh, the roast beef cam. That's my cat, roast beef. Doing a lot of sleep in a day. Okay, here we go. So I've got our... Uh, our gratin mixture here, which is uh, the cheese and the oat milk and everything that you just saw, garlic. We're going to put it on the stove. Okay. Uh, also, some people have asked about uh, the fact that I have an earpiece. That's because I have a friend who's... Uh, who's trying to help me by giving me some of the uh, questions that you're asking because I do want that to be a big part of this. I'm an instructor and uh, you can't instruct unless you also listen. Um, thoughts on leaving the stove on overnight to preheat? Pre yeah, absolutely. Um, if you leave it on overnight, it's going to get uh, not only will it keep your place nice and warm, but uh, that way the next morning when you want to uh, put something on the stove, it's already going to be good and hot for you. Um, okay, well, let's go ahead and do some music here. Uh, okay, we got some great uh, suggestions here. But uh, first, I'm gonna I'm gonna do one of my own uh, choice, 
and then I'm going to look at your uh, options. A couple of those I already did that uh, help me and uh, guacamole. I haven't done the horse of, whore of Sausalito, so I'll, I'll do that. Um, but but right now I want to do a little song about um, about the complication of uh, breakups and uh, human interpersonal interaction with uh, um, members of uh, loved ones or whatever. Uh, it, it's it's a breakup song, I guess. And, um, do you hear that? Okay, do you hear the guitar? That is a yes. Okay, here we go. This is a song called Uber. She says she wants to Uber home now. Cause you're just not her type of guy. But she still wants to be your friend. If she meets her Mr. Right, then maybe you could help them move their stuff when she moves in with him. But for now, she just wants to Uber home. She says it's not that you're not handsome. got better things to do than to hang around with you. She's got other ways she'd rather spend her time. So if you don't mind, she just wants an Uber home. Uh, true story. Hold on a sec. I'm afraid I disrupted uh, my cat. Um, no speed. He was, uh, Oh, yeah. I'm going to have to feed him really quick because he's a little bit perturbed. So, meanwhile, let's, um, well, you know what, actually, yeah, just give me one second here. Come on, buddy. Okay, um, the uh, O'Broughton should be ready. Uh, let's see here. Very nice. So what I'm going to do uh, is I'm going to put it back into our bowl here. Move, remove some of this other stuff. It definitely smells delicious. I think that's mostly the garlic talking. Um, now we're going to simply add in our potatoes. And we just want to stir, stir, stir. Um, and make sure that every single potato coin is completely submerged within the uh, gratin mixture. And meantime, uh, this is probably a good time to answer any questions you might have. Um, um, potatoes of gratin, you're going to see this at some of the finer uh, restaurants. 
I don't know where everybody is on an international basis, but here uh, in the United States, we have a place called Arby's Roast Beef Sandwiches. And uh, it's actually a chain. There's several of them across the country. But uh, you, you kind of have to dress up a little bit to go there. Um, but they're the kind of place that would serve a French side dish like uh, potatoes au gratin. You might also find this, uh, but it's definitely not street food if that's what you're wondering. You could wrap it up into a flour tortilla and make it a burrito. And that might be kind of delicious, a cheese and potato burrito, but it's really more traditionally found in finer restaurants. Um, somebody wanted, oh, uh, we have a question about roast beef. Uh, roast beef is currently 17 years old. He's a very old guy and uh, he's become a little bit uh, grumpy like when he wakes up from a long nap that's why I'm hoping uh, he'll go back to sleep soon so that he doesn't uh, interrupt us but um, he's a good guy you know and I'm gonna miss him because we're not all on this planet forever we get one little short dance that is but the flicker of an eyelash in the face of the universe and that's a lot of what roast beef and I kind of talk about well I mean I obviously I do the talking but he I think he kind of understands um, okay so the next step here is uh, we're going to be remo removing these uh, Oh, we have a question about why I started Henry's Kitchen. Um, I think that's a good question. About, I guess this would have been about 2011, I was uh, terribly depressed. Um, I had just hit my 40s. I was uh, probably completely broke. I was going through a breakup. Uh, I was drinking probably more than I should have at the time, and I was just uh, heartbroken and alone and scrolling through YouTube videos. And um, at one point, uh, and I think I mentioned this during asparagus, I, I wanted to uh, find a vegetable that I thought that I could um, start eating because I thought that would be doing something good for myself. And I went to a Thai restaurant and had their asparagus and thought it was delicious. So I came home and, and punched into YouTube, how do you make asparagus? And there were just all these people teaching you how to do it. And obviously I learned how to make grilled asparagus like a pro, but there was something bigger that happened. And that's that I saw people living their lives at their homes and uh, teaching people and spreading the love of cooking and I thought I want to do that I had never cooked anything before in my life um, but I wanted to teach it as I learned it which I think is a good idea if anybody out there wants to learn guitar for example just uh, put an advertisement out there telling people that you'll teach them how to play the guitar and um, you'll get students and then you learn with them but you're getting paid which is uh, better and um, not that uh, cooking has ever really gotten me a lot of success in the financial department um, I uh, would probably say that if I if I added up all the money that I've made on YouTube from 2011 to 2021 it would probably be enough to pay for the meals that I made if I sold them at a nice restaurant for example like if I sold the, the potatoes au gratin that I'm making now what were we talking about sorry I feel like I got a little bit off topic but um, yeah no but but years have gone by and I think that cooking has changed my life it saved my life uh, I'm still depressed and heartbroken but at least I've got a lot of uh, food that I can enjoy in the meantime Let's see what this says here. Uh, it says we're going to want to transfer our uh, potatoes 
to a, a two quart baking dish and uh, we're going to coat it with cooking spray and we're going to bake for a little while. So I'm going to go ahead and put the oven on. I should have done this first and I don't know why I didn't. I guess I'm just a little bit distracted, but let's go ahead and grab a cooking sheet. I'm gonna lay it. This is obviously a little, uh, a little worn in terms of uh, this this cookie sheet. So I'm gonna go ahead and use some tin foil. And we're gonna lay down our au gratin using our paring knife. Somebody's asking my favorite, uh, my biggest in um, inspiration in terms of cooking. Well, I could go with the obvious ones and say Martha Stewart, Julia Child, um, Anthony Bourdain. But uh, I would probably go for a more alternative um, source and say my grandmother. Um, I mentioned that I didn't really have any cooking experience prior to uh, my 40s, but I did uh, a little bit of cooking with my grandmother. She unfortunately, um, and this is kind of personal, I'm not saying she was a bad person, but she was in and out of jail a lot through her life because she just couldn't seem to keep out of trouble. Uh, yeah, my, my grandmother is no longer with us. Um, it was uh, very sad. She was 99 years old. And, um, okay, so now we're just gonna go ahead and spread these out on our cookie sheet. You wanna give enough, uh, enough room in between the potatoes for them to, to cook individually. Um, someone asked if my uh, grandmother died in prison. No. No, she she was she was on the streets. Um, oh, uh, very important question. Do we use the metric system or um, what we call here the English system? I guess uh, the metric system is much better. Everything is divisible by ten to an easy degree, and uh, if you try to start getting into using um, inches and feet and stuff when you're trying to do your cooking. Not only is it going to be uh, more complicated, but when you start doing the division, it's nearly impossible. Like, for example, Alexa, what is one-fifth of a foot of potatoes? Okay, two inches. So maybe it's not as hard if you have modern equipment to help you. I'm going to wash my hands here for a second. And... We're going to go ahead and uh, put this in the oven and we're going to leave it in there for about 20 minutes at a very high heat. Still has a little time. Um, so we have somebody uh, asking um, how many cubic feet in four yeah no these are all very difficult questions uh, yeah 400 degrees that's exactly what I have it on which is great uh, I'm getting people uh, saying it looks delicious that's very nice uh, nice of you I think uh, this would probably be a good time not to do a song just yet, but probably one of my favorite uh, parts of these tutorials is just giving me a, a little chance to play the Henry's Kitchen game. Um, I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, 
And I hope that you guys are playing. As a matter of fact, I know some people are because there is somebody named Shebaz who has a uh, score on there that's ridiculous. Like, I, if there were a way to cheat, I would think that they did. But they have, like, uh, 81 or something. I'm going to tweet out um, the link to the game if you guys want to play along on another uh, screen or whatever. Um, but... I'm also going to, uh, for people that aren't familiar, I'm going to uh, teach people how um, to do it. Let's see here, I'm going to try to shape this thing a little bit better. Um, my friend made this game. Alright, so uh, here we go. I'm going to uh, cook. Uh, so you push cook. If you're using a phone, you want to turn it sideways. And then you'll use your thumbs on each side of the screen to move the caricature in the middle. So I'm pushing cook. And what you want to do is you want to start gathering ingredients for your sandwich. Uh-oh. There's something something went wrong there. I'm gonna uh I'm gonna try it again. Sometimes it takes a little while to load. Um, remember, this game is free, so it's not necessarily uh, in tip-top shape in terms of a lot of things, but uh, here we go. You're gonna try to uh, gather up your ingredients. I've got my peanut butter, the jelly, and uh, you're trying to make peanut butter and jelly sandwiches. And you're trying to avoid the rats, um, it starts out really easy. I'm going to see if I can get the sound on there. Uh oh. Delish. There we go. Okay. Um, Great. Great. Nice. So I have two, two bad, so that means that there's going to be uh, one more chance Sandwich awesome. made. before, uh, I don't think this particular game Sandwich is going to last made. very long. Sandwich awesome. made. Woohoo! So bread. I've got bread. Peanut, peanut butter. butter. Jelly. Sandwich yeah. made. Woohoo! Sandwich Woo made. Sandwich Woo made. Sandwich Woo made. Great. Uh, the highest score that I was able to get was 77. Uh, yeah. Bumble has yeah. 78. Yeah. And I'd like to beat that score, but 81 from Shebaz. Oh, okay. So I'm I'm getting that there's nice. uh, a made. problem. Hold on a second. Awesome. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, <clears throat> let that part of it skip because there was a problem with the. Uh, holy guacamole! Holy. I just got hit. Um, I'm not going to bother with uh, putting anything there. Okay, so yeah, you can see Chavez has 89. That's crazy. Oh, too much cherry. The new player here. Chavez is killing it. And uh, too much cherry. Wow, there's some people getting really high scores on that. Bumble's there at 78, and then mine is right under there. I just and, uh, got busted for drugs. I should be able to see it, but I don't. Uh, I'm 78. Okay, so uh, I'm going to try to do it for real this time. We've got a little bit of time while our oak rotten potatoes are cooking. This is going to be the best game of Henry's Kitchen that I've ever played. And, I, and mark my words, because now I'm feeling good about it. You can see everything, hopefully. Awesome. Yeah. Somebody asked what makes me laugh. Sandwich made. Um, I'd probably say the overall feudal nature of uh, existence as a concept. It's nice. so daunting yeah. as a mental Sandwich exercise made. to try Peanut to grasp butter. it. Sandwich made. That you Delish. find yourself only being Great. able to laugh at the absurdity Great. of it all. Um, so, I, but I think it is important for laugh to, to have laughter. You have to be able to yeah, laugh at something. Peanut butter. It's nice. good for the body. Nice. 
awesome. just like eating great. is good for the body and uh awesome a lot of times yeah. i'll laugh yeah. while i'm great. cooking um i hope awesome. it's not too annoying here yeah. uh, yeah. yeah. the sound effects you can yeah. see when i get certain things like bread or yeah. jelly yeah, yeah. Nice. Yeah. Okay, nice. so now let's see Great. what's happening here. I have way too yeah. much wow. bread, hey. but not enough jelly. So I'm going to start prioritizing jelly when I see it. Nice. Yeah. Because yeah. they're going to start hey. coming down faster. Yeah. I'll nice. grab bread if it is convenient. Right. And by the way, I'm also trying to figure out how to get yeah. it so yeah. that I can, awesome. you have the little window of me awesome. in the corner. Nice. That's another uh, thing yeah. that I'm trying to work on. Yeah, awesome. Um, awesome. Great. Too much bread, nice. no jelly. I think that's yeah, a uh, lyric in Alanis Morissette's song about "Isn't it ironic?" Sandwich awesome. made. Uh, Sandwich yeah, we, made. we've got twice awesome. as much Sandwich bread made. and not enough jelly. So I'm gonna really go on a jelly yeah. grabbing rampage. Yeah, made. Made. Um, yeah. awesome. Yeah, yeah. Made. Awesome. Um, it's got a yeah, made. Okay, so and also if I get to thirty, then I get a free life. And so Great. far, I've got no um, bads. Sandwich made. Yeah. Sandwich if there were made. an ethical way to do it, would I eat human? Well, Great. we've all heard stories of people who are yeah, um, trapped Sandwich in, made. in survivalist. Uh, Sandwich situations made. where um, awesome. the only way that they can survive nice. is to eat uh, maybe the falling nice. Nice. Uh, passengers nice. of a plane crash and that, that happened and they made a movie about it. Uh oh. Sorry, I got a little distracted. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay, made. I got my free life, yeah. so that's good. Right about the time that I lost one. Um, awesome. Absolutely. Sandwich you made. know, I, I, I have. Some really, really close friends, yeah. and if we were in a plane crash Night. and yeah. they died, hey. Hey. I think that they would want me awesome. to awesome. eat them hey. with them if they knew hey. that it was the hey. only way that they were going to survive. Hey. It's not something yeah. that people hey. want to talk about, but yeah. it is a good hey. idea to uh, awesome. to have all this stuff in writing before the incident happens because you don't want to regret it. Yeah. Hey. So I have most of my friends sign a thing when we go camping or something. That says that I—I uh, I don't yeah. know what that is. Yeah, but, um, that I have the right awesome. to eat them. Great, great. which made. Great, nice, great, made. Great, made. 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 great, awesome. Okay. Nice. Made. Which so made. Uh, this is going. Yeah, awesome. Uh, Damn, really well, yeah. I, I set out to make this an important game. Damn, so yeah. You can yeah. see they start yeah. coming down great. really hard. Great. I finally closed the gap with jelly, so now yeah, what I need is peanut butter. butter. Made, 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 made. I'm really jamming. Yeah, yeah, which <laughs> made. Um, let's see here. Awesome, Woo -hoo. awesome. Okay. Brett, that's a sandwich um, made. That's a oh, okay. That's it. Holy I'm going to put HP. Holy guacamole. I just got hit. I didn't get like nearly as uh, good as I wanted to. And you're the one who I'm swept me turn off that. my We could do that song live. Well, um, let me see some of your uh, other comments. Um, I, I see some comments about uh, Forsen, and I've heard a lot about Forsen, and uh, I don't think I've met Forsen in person, but would like to. A lot of shout outs to Nim. Nim is the one who got me started on all of this stuff and I'm looking forward to one day uh, doing another collaboration. And also Bumble Vision and, uh, and some of my old close friends like uh, Bill Larkin, who I follow on Twitch, who does uh, improvised uh, songs. Uh, is probably one of my favorite uh, channels to watch. Um, let's see here. Uh, well, why don't I do another song because uh, the, our potatoes are rotten, aren't quite ready yet. Um, let's see. Uh, all right. I got a request for the Whore of Sausalito. Uh, I'm going to try to dust it off. It's been a little while.
This is an old sailor song about the sailors on the docks of a place called Sausalito, California, which I've never been to, but I assume they've got uh, docks because it's right on the beach there. Um, she is the whore of Sausalito. She knows just how to ease your mind And if you ask her her name She'll just smile and bat her eyes For the horror of Sausalito never lies She says she hails from Pasadena We all know that that's a lie And if you listen very close You'll hear her crying in the night For the horror of Sausalito Lives in me uh, Sorry, I, I got a little confused on the lyrics on the end of that part So uh, I'm going to have to work on that one a little bit Before I can get more of it so let me uh, let me skip to another one then. Um, does anybody have any other songs that they like? Uh, maybe a song that you've heard on the radio. What are my opinions on the Federal Signal Thunderboat uh, air raid siren? Uh, I think it's good. It's not it's not as good as uh, some of the previous technology they were using, but I think it's going to be a good thing. Um, all right, we're going to go ahead and do one more song, then we're going to grab our dish and uh, taste it, and hopefully it's going to come out good. Um, why, don't, why don't I go just do a couple of verses of uh, the old standby here. Help me make it through the night I am tired and alone. This is the song that uh, got me started in the kitchen. Help me make it through the night. Cause there's nothing out there for me anymore. I'm always coming in last place and getting sand in my face and everyone pushes ahead of me and no one stops to care I curse the gods each day I live and everything is terrible and I guess that's just the way it's meant to be help me make it through the night cause I don't Okay, so that song is called uh, Help Me Make It Through the Night by Jose Suicidio. And now it's time for the best part of the whole episode here. We are going to pull our grilled asparagus out of the oven, or I'm sorry, uh, potatoes au gratin. And we're going to uh, put it on a plate. And you know what? I might even put uh, a peanut butter cookie on the side of it. I still have uh, some of these from last time. They're really great if you dip them into coffee. But uh, let's see what happens here.
Someone asked if I had to cook for a clown. Wow, there's a lot of dark imagery going on in some of these comments. Cooking for a clown, um, eating people on camping trips, um, but that's okay. I've always liked to say that there's no dumb questions, there's only creepy questions. And uh, if I were to cook for a clown, I would probably make something that would uh, that would be funny in a way. And I'd probably say the funniest food is probably going to be something that um, that involves bananas, maybe a banana split. Um, because if you can make a clown laugh, then you can make anybody laugh. Um, but I'm not trying to make anybody laugh. I'm trying to change the world with my cooking. And that's what I'm going to do right now with this dish, which is called potatoes au gratin. I just have to figure out how I can play it to the camera here for you. Um, I know. Okay, let's, uh, let's put it on the table and, um, ah, you got to remember to wear an oven mitt when you're doing it. You can see I've got my peanut butter cookie and my potatoes au gratin, and this is going to be a nice delicious lunch and it's filled with potassium. Ow, oh, this is gonna be very warm for you here. Uh, but it's filled with potassium, also a lot of uh, vitamins and fibers that come along with any, uh, any type of uh, vegetable-based food. Uh, I will warn you that it has a lot of saturated fat because of the cheese. And, um, but just a little less because we used oat milk. And uh, this is probably one of the better dishes that I've made. It's, uh, here, let's see here, get a good look at that. Okay, so I'm getting some compliments on the ratio from potatoes to cookies. Um, We have a question about whether I eat the food that I make. Yeah, I, I'm cooking for myself, for my dinner, um, or in this case, lunch. I know a lot of the people out there are uh, in different time zones, so this might be more of a, a late night snack for you, which is okay. I'm gonna grab a fork. This is gonna be very hot. You wanna be careful with tin foil. And I'll tell you why. Um, if you don't know what you're doing, you can um, actually have whatever food that you're eating get stuck to the tin foil. And this is a big problem, and it's it's a problem that some of the most experienced chefs in the world uh, deal with. Gordon Ramsay, uh, some of the other ones that I mentioned earlier, Julia Child, and um, you want to be very careful with that because if the food that you're eating has a little bit of tin foil in it, or aluminum foil, I guess they call it now because it's more politically correct or whatever, but um, you can uh, swallow the aluminum and uh, end up getting a certain type of poisoning that can leave you completely in a catatonic state. You're still alive, but you're not able to, to function. And so you wanna be careful. As a matter of fact, now, did you guys see when I was scraping the potatoes off, hopefully there wasn't any tin foil. You can also tell if there's any holes in your uh, tin foil. I guess I'm just a little bit worried because uh, I have a big hole there, but whatever. Uh, you know, you could spend your whole life worrying about stuff like, you know, am I gonna get tin foil poisoning from cooking for myself at home? But uh, again, we only have a short little time on this planet and you don't want to um, drag it out by wor worrying about problems like that. So let's go ahead and
Well, I gotta say, um, this is probably better than what you would get at a fancy French restaurant. It's, um, it's got a little bit of, um, maybe, uh, well, it's got a lot of garlic, that's for sure. So whatever we did there worked out perfectly. Um, and it's got a little bit of a bitterness, and I think that might be because the potatoes that I was using um, were uh, had been had sort of seen uh, some time on this earth, and so uh, I don't know if that's necessarily a good thing or not. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna eat it because eating your own food is just as important as making it. Um, the cookies are going to take a little while to get through because the problem that I'm having with them is that they're very hard and so you can really only eat uh, so much of it in one sitting that's why if you don't get in coffee it gets softer but To conclude, everyone, um, don't let people tell you that you're not good at cooking um, just because they don't think the stuff that you make tastes very good. A lot of it is a learning process and a lot of it is subjective, you know. Um, I might give this dish to a friend of mine who's really into cooking and they might think it tastes like shit. I can't... Uh, say that what their opinion of it is wrong. I just know that I'm probably a better chef than they are and it's not even a matter of uh, opinion after you've been doing it for as many years as I have. Um, and that's not being cocky, it's just being realistic. Um, but I do, as always, want to thank everyone uh, for joining me here today. I hope you learned something. I hope you enjoyed some of the music and uh, Again, I'm trying to work out some of the kinks, but I, I do uh, really enjoy the, um, the company, actually, because I'm overall a pretty lonely person, and it's just nice to have uh, some interaction with human beings, even though it's just on the computer. So, um, thanks again, everybody, and I just uh, I really appreciate it, and I'll... Uh, be back on Sunday with a new recipe. Sunday at noon is when I usually do it. Um, and uh, I might adjust the schedule because I want to make sure that there's some people that might only be able to see it at night uh, could, could check it out. So um, I'll try to have something really, really exciting uh, ready and, uh, and some new songs. And as always, I very much appreciate it.